What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and today we have another episode of the Holiday Gift Guide and this time it is the best tech over $500. These are products that we've checked out throughout the year that I believe are great options for anyone who's looking for an upgrade when it comes to their productivity setup, maybe creative industry or a new smartphone. And if you guys want to go ahead and check out the other price points, I have episodes of under $50 and $25 as well as under $100 and $200. So there is a guide for everyone throughout a variety of different categories. As you guys know, I'm giving away a PS5 on the channel for the holiday season. So you just go ahead and comment on any of the four videos from the gift guide series, as well as your Instagram username. And I'll be picking a winner from one of the videos on December 20th and leaving a pinned comment of which video the winner came from. All you have to do is make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment on any of the gift guide videos. I believe there's four of them. And I'll be picking a winner from one of the four episodes on December 20th and leaving a pinned comment of which video the winner came from. So today we have a lot of exciting stuff. We've checked out tons of great pieces of camera tech as well as home tech and some smartphones that I have in front of me right here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. One product that has become a staple in our travel bag is the DJI Mini Pro. We actually have the Mavic 3 and like the larger model of the drone, which does record at a better quality and it has a higher bit rate, but it is just a drone that is not as versatile as something like this. Especially if you're in places where there's different regulations, 249 grams is going to make it a lot more accessible and also a lot easier to use in many different scenarios. At a price point of well under $1,000, it is a great value because it gives you a 5.7K resolution. And the only real drawback, in my opinion, is the fact that it has a bit rate of 8-bit, which for most people is not really going to matter, and especially with social media posting, it's not going to matter, but I do like to color grade my footage, so I do appreciate whenever the camera is able to record at a 10-bit, but you really can't have everything because at the size, it is already an incredible piece of tech with great battery life, and most importantly, it also has a vertical gimbal as well. So you can go ahead and in a press of a button, the camera will actually rotate and you can get a full resolution vertical video from there, and for just a bit of an upgraded price, you also get a display built into the controller. So you don't have to clamp your smartphone in and utilize that. I absolutely love this remote control. And if you were to go ahead and purchase a remote with a screen for the larger models of drone, it essentially costs more than this entire package together. So I think if you're looking for a drone, whether you're like a prosumer or just someone looking to pick up the first one and really implement it into your videos, this is like the option that I'm gonna recommend to the most people. As someone who does a lot of videos about home, one of the favorite products that we always feature is the Dyson V15 Detect Vacuum. This one has the laser built in that is specifically angled and it's able to show you dust that you may not otherwise see or is hidden. And so you can see in this demonstration here, it is very unique and I feel like it's a very intelligent feature that is a lot of fun. It really does make that cleaning experience a lot better, but most importantly, it is a cordless vacuum that gives you up to 60 minutes of continuous usage. That that is really impressive because whether you have a small to mid-sized house or a condo, for example, you're able to have that cordless experience and Dyson has really revolutionized that category. This is a larger model, but there is also a V12 Detect Slim, which has the laser, but it's a smaller form factor and still gives you that 60 minutes of continuous usage. But yeah, you can see it's so beautifully well designed. There's a screen on the back here that allows you to see what is going on, the amount of time you have left, and you can also set it to different settings of the eco mode, the automatic, as well as the boost setting. But this is something that I use all the time and with all the different attachments, it is able to take care of all of your cleaning needs around the house. With the rise of short form video, another really fun accessory is the Insta360 X3. This is a camera that is able to record at a 5.7K 360 degree field of view, which provides a very unique viewpoint that not many products on the market are able to offer. I really like the modes such as me mode, which is essentially gonna give you a really cool effect and can export in horizontal or vertical, which makes it very easy to implement into your travel films or your social media videos. The 360 degree effect is also really cool because you can go ahead and reframe it to anything. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers who create very specific 
types of content, be able to rely fully on the Insta360 to capture it in a unique perspective. I think what you're seeing in this trend of social media video is that the best camera is the one that is the most accessible, it's the quickest, and is able to get you the field of view that a larger traditional camera is not able to get, and the Insta360 X3 definitely fits that category. So the Steam Deck is another really interesting tech product that we checked out this year. And there is a ton of intrigue and interest about it because I feel like there's been a huge void in portable gaming, especially in the past few years. You have the Nintendo Switch, as well as smartphone accessories. And I mean, nowadays smartphones come in at great displays and allow you to just download apps very easily to play on. So I kind of understand that in a way, but it was still cool to see a product built by a company that is an expert in gaming and that is Valve and the Steam Deck right here delivers a bit of like a desktop experience to the portable world. It gives you a relatively large display to be able to work with and from the Steam collection, there are games that have been specifically optimized to work on this mobile experience. What I notice about it is that the ergonomics are all really good. There's a nice touchpad on both sides as well as a joystick. The bumpers and the actual triggers provide a very authentic gaming experience, but I just like how large the display is and just the amount of potential that this platform has. Has. By no means is it perfect. It does still glitch here and there, and I will say that the plastic hardware is not exactly the best look for it, but I think it's a really good start, and I'm really excited to see what types of games are gonna continue to be optimized for the Steam Deck itself. So the next product right here is the new LG Gram 16 inch with 12th generation i7 processor. I wanna give huge thanks to LG for sponsoring this video, but it is so nice to have this device back in the office, because if you guys remember back in the day, I actually used to review the LG Gram every single single year because it was just such a cool product. It is extremely light and that is still its biggest feature, hence its name, and it comes in at a weight of just 2.64 pounds, which for a 16 inch laptop like this is super impressive, but it still brings a lot of power and efficiency. And in the world of Evo laptops, it is still a very compelling option. So taking a look at the hardware itself, you can see that this is the black model and it has like a nice matte black finish to it. And what I love is that the hardware has been very well refined over the years. The hinge itself just folds very fluid and the bezels are extremely small, but at the same time, the keyboard and typing experience is also there. It is built out of a magnesium material, so it is very durable, despite the fact that it feels extremely light. And when it comes to IO, you still have two of your Thunderbolt ports on the side, as well as a full-size HDMI, two USB-A ports, and also a micro SD card slot. I've been seeing a lot of computers only feature one Thunderbolt port, so it is nice that this one has two. When it comes to a display, it is a 2560 by 1600 resolution IPS screen that has a 99% DCI P3 coverage. This is especially important for anyone who's doing creative work out there, whether it is a bit of video editing or for photo editing, especially when you need accurate references to colors or if you're just enjoying multimedia. And I've always found the display on the LG Gram to be really good. It also provides just enough brightness and good viewing angles thanks to the IPS technology. And at the same time, there's also Intel Iris graphics that are able to power most of what you're able to need on more of like a day-to-day -day level because a computer of this size does not have a dedicated GPU. When when it comes to the performance itself, this computer features the Intel 12th generation i7 processor paired with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of fast NVMe storage. And being an Intel Evo certified computer, it features great power as well as great battery life, which is able to get you through an entire day, which is always impressive due to its size and weight. As for the performance itself, I would say that the LG Gram lineup is one that is really good for productivity. If you wanna bring your computer around on the go and be able to travel with it, having a light computer is going to make a big difference and having a 16 inch display alongside that is also really nice, especially if you wanna have a lot of different things on your screen to maximize productivity. There is also different size offerings available, but when it comes to the 16 inch model itself with the i7 configuration, I was able to do all of the day-to-day admin tasks, but I was also able to do like photo editing, which is usually where I would say a computer like this is able to handle quite well. There's also stereo speakers built in and a full HD webcam on the front. And I feel like for its price point, especially at the sale price, it is a pretty good value considering all the things that it is able to provide. So if you guys want to go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm going to drop a link down below. And I want to give a huge thanks to LG once again for sponsoring this video. 
As for some of my favorite larger cameras on the market, I would say this is really like an ultimate gift, but these are two products that I've picked up in the last year or two and have become an essential part of the workflow. The first one right here is a Sony FX3. This camera has been out for a bit, but it has become extremely popular as the go-to best all-around cinema camera value for its price. It is able to record at a 4K resolution through its full frame sensor and has in-body image stabilization, incredible dynamic range and S-Log as well as S-Cinetone and just the ergonomics of it make it an impressive camera all around. There's even elements that are really good for YouTubers and vloggers where the camera is able to flip out to the front and it is just so compact and has the same sensor as a larger and more expensive Sony FX6 cinema camera. And I mean, as you can probably tell, I just have so many good things to say about this. It can fly on a gimbal, you can bring it around anywhere. The stabilization, slow motion capabilities are all really nice. And there's also dual card slots. But specifically, if you're looking for a really good value camera, I would say that for anyone who does video as a profession, this is a good deal but more so the Sony FX30, which is a new model that came out with an APS-C sensor, but all of the other same features of the camera is one that I believe is at a very unbeatable price point if your budget is limited to under $2,000. That camera is essentially undercutting the FX3 in a lot of ways. And even though I personally do need like the full frame effect and everything like that, I believe that it is just such an incredible deal for what the camera is able to offer. And it's a good gateway into the Sony cinema lineup. When it comes to the great photo camera though, I've been using the Leica Q2 for the past couple years. This is a camera that I feel like is a very niche audience and I didn't see many people go ahead and buy it for quite a few years. If you're willing to spend the money, the Leica Q2 is just a camera that that I use for all my Instagram photos and have the best things to say about it. To the point where I've actually picked up a Leica SL2S to just continue the Leica ecosystem for photos. The camera that I would recommend though, if you can find it in stock, is the Fuji X100V. I had that right before the Leica Q2 and what I like about that is that it has great image quality, it still has like a nice filmic style to it and you have all the different effects that you can use from the Fuji lineup in the picture profiles, but it is also more compact than the Leica Q2. The lens itself is able to sit in a little bit more so you could actually fit it in your pocket. And so yeah, that was actually the camera that I used for quite a while. And now it is just so hard to find in stock because it has become extremely popular. The phone that I've been using since release though is the iPhone 14 Pro. I switched over to the smaller design in the past couple years and I find that it is really good in terms of overall performance, but most importantly, the camera has seen some improvements once again. They're definitely not night and day compared to the previous generation, but when it comes to video performance, the cameras all let in more light with a combination of improvements of hardware and the main sensor being up to 48 megapixel and being able to capture raw photos, but at the same time, due to software optimizations and the image signal processing, you'll also see some improvements there, whether you go with the iPhone 14 or the iPhone 14 Pro. Personally, as someone who uses a camera all the time, the features of the iPhone 14 Pro camera specifically are ones that I really appreciate, but I do still believe the 14 is a great value, especially if you wanna go ahead and grab the iPhone 14 Plus, which has incredible battery life. Beyond the cameras though, the front also has the dynamic island, which I think is a pretty good design approach to removing the notch, but still having all the elements of the front facing camera and the face ID sensor implemented. And there is some functional element to it as well. You can control stuff like your apps, Spotify, and whatever is able to utilize that dynamic island, which I believe is the best approach because there's still a lot of hardware that Apple wants to fit on the front, but I don't really find myself using it as much as expected. The only drawback on the iPhone 14 Pro is that I think the battery life is okay, a little bit worse than the previous generation, but if you want that ultimate battery life and ultimate performance, then the iPhone 14 Pro Max is probably the model that you're gonna want to go with, or you can just go ahead and pick up a backup battery. So when it comes to my two favorite Android phones of the year, the best hardware that I've seen include the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, the Oppo Find X5 Pro with its beautiful ceramic unibody finish, as well as a Google Pixel 7 Pro. It by no means is a new design, but I do believe it's a very beautiful phone, especially in that green and gold color. 
but most importantly, it has all of the best hardware elements at the moment, and it's anchored by the Google Tensor Chip second generation. The Pixel 7 Pro features a 6.7 inch LTPO AMOLED display with a 120 hertz refresh rate and HDR10 plus compatibility. But I think the area that is most impressive is its camera technology. It really is the total package. You have a 50 megapixel main camera with an f1.9 aperture, as well as a 48 megapixel 120 millimeter telephoto camera that is a periscope design at a 5x zoom. You also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, but I think just from the main camera as well as the telephoto camera, it provides an incredible experience. And I think the display and design and everything is really nice. And the phone's G2 chipset is very well optimized and gives you great battery life. And if you're looking to go for a model that perhaps has all of the top features minus some of the camera technology then you can also go with the Google Pixel 7 which I believe is a pretty good value. So another product that came out this year is the GoPro Hero 11 Pro Black and this has a lot of features that are good for the general consumer but also for people who are in professional video. It is able to record at a resolution of 5.3k 60 frames per second and now with the 10-bit color space it gives you more latitude when it comes to editing and just more data in the image over Overall. Similar to the DJI Mini Pro, it also records in essentially a ratio that is able to let you use the footage in vertical and horizontal thanks to that 8 to 7 aspect ratio. It is really handy for someone like myself who finds myself recording in a lot of mediums of vertical and horizontal and I just don't like to crop horizontal video into vertical because it just doesn't look right. And with the HyperSmooth 5.0, it gets you really really steady footage through the gyroscope and all the data that is built in. So it's really nice to see that over the last few years, the biggest improvements of the GoPro lineup have been in the stabilization and its software, as well as the image quality, which is really important when blending footage from this camera with stuff like the larger drones and also the cinema cameras that we use in our videos. The form factor is also exactly the same as the previous generation. So if you have existing accessories, you can just go ahead and throw this into your lineup, no problem. Another really good tech gift if you're looking for one for your girlfriend or your wife, for example, is the Dyson Corral. And we featured the Dyson Supersonic in the previous episode, but the Dyson Corral is like an ultimate accessory for anyone who is looking for the best curler or straightener on the market. It has enhanced styling with half the damage and it's engineered to create a range of styles using Dyson's technology in the hair care line that has been setting the tone in that space for so many years since its release. Whether it was a supersonic or the air wrap, it is essentially the gold standard for these hair care products. What is great about it is the design is beautiful, especially in the limited edition holiday color for this year. It comes in a beautiful gift box with all the accessories and it is a cordless design. You're able to just go ahead and charge it in just 30 minutes and get some usage, but it takes about 70 minutes to fully charge. There's also an OLED screen that displays the battery level, temperature setting, and charging status during the usage. And you're able to very easily curl or straighten your hair using this product, but it is just so well-rounded and beautifully designed while giving you that great cordless experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the over $500 gift guide. And as I mentioned, make sure you check out the other episodes because I have many other price categories covered from $50 and under, $25 and under, and $10 and under, as well as under 100, 200, as well as 500, just because I know a lot of people are looking for products in different categories. And some of them are really good accessories that complement the flagship products and the main staples that you have in your workflow and your daily tech gadget bag. So make sure you check those out and I'll see you all in the next video.